Well, Salesh is now on the move again. She's settled for a few seconds in the shade and now she's decided to move again. But it is not easy to negotiate this area that we're in. There's a lot of very spiny branches that I'm trying to sort of get around and get through. And Salesh is not making it very easy. She keeps kind of moving and trying to get into a new area. And I'm sure she's just trying to find a bit of shade. Now, Senzo, did you see where she went? I lost, she went this way, okay. Ah, uh, there she is. It's also the problem when you've got such long grass like this, <laughs> they disappear in a second. Now, hopefully she's going to settle here. Looks like at least a nice sort of openish section that we can see her. So I believe a lot of you are sending in lots of screenshots of her, which is great. She really is a beautiful female. In fact, I'm just going to try to go back slightly, Senzo, because you've got that branch in her face. In fact, let's go forward a bit so we can give the others a chance to also see her. And I'm sure we're going to find a nice gap here. There we go, that's better, Senzo. So, I'm just trying to get everybody into the right places, but there we go. Hopefully she's going to now settle down a little bit and won't drag us around this thicket too much more. But you can see that she's panting quite heavily. That's because of the amount of food that's pushing up on her stomach um, and onto her lungs. And so she's going to be taking much shorter breaths and also she'll develop quite a bit of heat. It's starting to get quite warm now. It was cold to start the day, but it is now starting to get quite hot. And so for a female that's been eating and going up and down trees and potentially having a bit of a sort of growl and hiss at her daughter, she might have built up a bit of excess heat and is now just trying to get rid of that. So, Winter Prism, I don't think you'll... So, in terms of her relations, she comes from a sort of different lineage to to what Karula does. She's not in all related to Karula. She comes from... Her mother was a Saseka, um, and then her... Sort of, I'm just trying to think who her brother was. There was a, a male that was with her at some point. I can't remember his name. Um, but that she comes from Saseka as her mother. Um, so she's not from Safari lineage. Um, and I think Saseka in some way was related to Safari. But I know there's some out there that will be able to help us with this. So remember, hashtag Safari Live, and you can tell us what the exact lineage of Saleh is. I just know who her mom is. Um, and then her daughter is in Sele. Um, and her and Sela's daughters in Chile, which we have seen on Safari Live before, but the rest of them we wouldn't have seen. I'm just trying to think now who the the other females would be that would be related to her. It all gets quite complicated after a while, and, and the lineages of all these different leopards, when you start going back generations, becomes quite quite tough to remember who's who. And it was before my time with Safari and Saseka were young. So I'm not 100% sure if they were actually related. That's right. Okay, now I remember. So Aqua, thank you very much for that. You say that their mothers were sisters. So that's right. Saseka and Safari were sisters. And so they, I suppose, are part of the same lineage then. And they're just cousins. And you can see she's... It's what, what's interesting about it is that she's actually a little bit bigger than Karula, so she's quite a lot larger, and she's one of the biggest females that I've seen in the Sabi Sands. She's got a quite a bulky sort of body, um, and so it's interesting that Karula was slightly smaller, and Karula's offspring tends to be quite small, so if you look at Tundi and Shadow, they tend to be very, very small females, whereas Salesh's female, and both in Sele and Tiani, are quite big girls. So it's interesting that they, even though they come from the same mother, in the long run, that there's a difference between the babies that they have. But it's all getting very, very tiring now. She's starting to fall asleep a little bit, so her eyes are starting to close. And I think she's going to probably end up sleeping in exactly the position that she's in now. She's got a nice shady spot and she's using the sort of cover of a wattle which has got nice sort of thick leaves and provides really good shade. And so as the sun moves, she can just move with the shade. And from here, she can still keep an eye out on that carcass because of where the carcass is in the tree. It's quite high up. 
It means that she can sit quite far away and still see what's going on. And if Tiani comes back, then she can then potentially go and compete with Tiani. Remember that even though they're mother and daughter, they are still competing with one another now that they've broken apart. Now I believe Taylor has found a very, very cute little bird to show all of you. So let's go across quickly before it disappears. Well, Stefan, I think any buffalo that chose to tangle with you would be a very stupid buffalo. Stefan is made of, I would say, leadwood and is far harder than a buffalo anyway. So don't worry, Steph, you'll be just fine. But yes, this is a far nicer sighting. I must be honest, a leopard, I'll take a leopard over a buffalo any day of the week. They are far prettier animals. And Salesh is still just taking it very easy. She's grooming a little bit and has just sort of settled in for the day, which is really nice. And we're in kind of the prime spot. She's come and settled quite close to us, so very, very happy to see her again. It's like seeing an old friend. It's amazing how it goes like this. You kind of spend so much time with these animals that when you don't see them for a long time, you end up missing them. And, and earlier we were talking about Karula, and yesterday we were watching a few clips um, of her and the cubs, and there was almost like a collective sigh in the room because it was all the presenters and the FC girls and cameramen and there's this kind of collective sort of sigh and hush that everybody sort of went quiet and, and Jamie then said, you know, that she misses her and everybody kind of agreed. And it's amazing how we actually form these kind of attachments to these cats. And it's, it's, it's an incredible thing to be a part of it and to be able to see this every single day and to be able to spend time with these individuals that you actually get to know them that well. It really is a, is, is a very big privilege. And so seeing Salesh after not seeing her for the last sort of four months is really, really, really good and makes me very, very happy indeed. So Stanley, 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 or Stanley Trifecta, you want to know whether I think her face looks like a lioness's face. I'm not sure, Stanley. I don't, I don't know if I see that. She, she has a slightly more elongated face than that of Shadow and Tundi. Shadow and Tundi seem to have that sort of very short muzzle, whereas Salish just does come out a little bit more, I suppose, like a lion's would. But I'm not sure I would call it a lion face. She's not that big, and, and I suppose in real life it looks a little bit different to on a camera, but she suppose it does have a slightly longer muzzle that could give that impression, but in real life I don't see it at all. She still looks very sort of petite female leopard to me. Um, so I suppose, like I say, it's, it's a, anyone's sort of individual opinion as to what a leopard looks like. It's also, we were talking about spot patterns yesterday morning with Hosanna, and everyone has a different sort of pattern that they'll use to identify you know, leopards. And I suppose looking at a facial feature, it'll also be remind people of certain things. What's caught your attention? She all of a sudden sort of popped her head up. She was sleeping, and I wonder if there's maybe not something around. I was watching her just now while we were off air, and she was looking into the skies, making sure there weren't any vultures creeping around towards her carcass. So I think she's just alert that there are others around, and potentially other leopards could be here as well. So that's maybe why she's sort of quite alert as to what's going on. But there we go. She's gone back to sleep, and... I'm pretty sure that's how she's going to stay for the remainder of the morning. But what is great about this is that there's more than enough at that carcass that she will still be here tonight or this afternoon and probably till tomorrow. So it's going to be really good for us and should have a leopard at least for the next two drives, which is fantastic. So, Julia, this is an interesting one. You want to know when sort of observing a leopard, what is the most unique behavior compared to other cats? Well, I think the, probably the most unique thing about a leopard is the fact that they are so solitary all the time. So watching them go about their business when they're just kind of doing everything on their own. So as a female leopard, having to find food, go back, suckle, come back to the food, make sure that it's not stolen by hyenas, and having to move around and survive in this environment without the help of anybody else must be really, really tough. So that is probably one of the most unique factors within it, with a leopard. The other thing with them is, is just how stealthy they can be and how easily they can camouflage. I've followed countless leopards where you are right behind them and they just decide that they don't want to be followed anymore and they just turn 
return and within five minutes you've lost them and you can't find them again for the life of you even though there's three vehicles with lights and all kinds of things it's often really tough to find them so there's sort of the way that they can just blend in and conceal themselves and that sort of that cunningness to be able to actually move and get into areas where they know they can't be seen is really what makes them sort of very special to me and and like I say the fact that they have to live the solitary life is really really quite tough and you can imagine how hard it must be out here when there's so many other predators there's so many things that could potentially kill you or harm your cubs or steal your food it must be a really really hard existence to be a solitary cat out in the African bush now she's popped her head up because another vehicle has arrived and it's another one of my old friends now. The gentleman that has arrived now is firstly one is my old tracker who is Derek and then the other one is Enoch who I used to work with when I was at Lion Sands. So both of them I know very very well and it's really good to see their faces. I haven't seen Enoch's face in about three years so I'm quite happy to see him. So really nice that they both here have very fond memories of spending time with both Enoch and Derek who is like I say my old tracker and Derek and I used to have some great experiences actually with Saleh we spent quite a lot of time tracking her together and found her many many times and I once watched him walking down the road and Saleh was just in front of him and they walked together down the road and she paid no sort of no attention to him she glanced over her shoulder every now and then and he would just kind of follow in behind her it was quite an amazing scene to watch so it's really good when you see old friends, both animal and people. But she'll just have popped her head up just because of the sort of squeakiness of the car and the car moving in. And you'll find she'll go back to sleep fairly shortly again. She's not going to spend too much time moving around now. It's starting to get much warmer. The sun is getting quite high and ultimately she does have herself a really, really nice spot. But isn't she beautiful? She's got those very light sort of honey colored eyes. I really, really think she's one of the sort of prettier leopards that we have out here. Not that there is an ugly leopard anyway, really. Leopards are generally very pretty animals. So funny enough, the last time I actually saw her was from the lodge at Simamili. She was walking across the, the deck there, and she it was interesting. We replaced the deck at Simomili and we took the old deck out and we used to see her there every now and then and we put the new one in and it wasn't even about two days of the new one being in there and we found her and Tiani on the deck itself and it was almost like they had come to investigate what this new sort of building was in their territory and they were making sure that they got first rights to it and scent marked it and we came in for morning coffee and as we came around the corner there were these two leopards just staring at us off the main deck it was quite quite entertaining some staff ended up running back but with her she's so relaxed with that because she's grown up around the lodges she was actually born at Simamili and she's had multiple litters of cubs there it means that she's so used to people walking around on foot much like Shungile that she really doesn't matter too much now I think we're going to probably carry on I'm going to try to see if I can't find Tiani somewhere here so while we do that let's go across to Steph who's looking at the finer things in life We definitely are taking in the finer details. We're still stuck in this thicket 